Hello everybody, it's Murray here and welcome back to my channel, I'm Stuart Paintings. On today's acrylic painting tutorial, we're going to do something different. We're going to create a shape of a cave, which is also a painting within a painting, because it's the shape of a person. And we're going to create the illusion of water and waves and a lovely, gorgeous setting sun. We're going to have a light effect and we're going to create rocks and texture within our cave to make it look realistic. I'm going to teach you how to do sunbeams and things, so you can paint this painting within a painting. So let's get into it. So it's a really easy tutorial today. We're going to need the following colours, which are white, yellow, orange, purple, a dot of cerulean blue, some cobalt blue, some burnt sienna, some brown and some black. Now I've drawn a person, which is going to be the outlet of our cave, the opening to our cave. Now you can, if you want to, draw yourself. So if you would like to, if you're a girl, say you could draw your own hair. I have no hair, <laughs> so I've just added a little bit of hair, but I'm mainly going to do a bald guy just to show you how to do it so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to block in our painting now I, all i'm going to do is use some orange and yellow and a dot of black it's orange and yellow lots and lots of yellow compared to orange and a dot of black and all i'm going to do is just block in this area now this area is going to be near to the sun so this part of the cave is going to be very bright and all i'm going to do is just add some orange to the tone and all that is is we're going to create a light effect now by just mixing some burnt sienna into orange and then just adding some blue and black together which is just blue and black that I've got pre-mixed so blue and black and burnt sienna together we get a very dark browny orangey tone which is not too harsh it's not as harsh as black it's a bit more realistic so just by using a big brush all I'm doing is just blocking in these warm tones going into a dark tone and it's just to emphasize our underpainting of our cave walls. So I had the idea of painting a head shape because I saw a cave and it looked pretty like a head and I thought wow is it just me it's a bit like when you see shapes in clouds and it reminded me when I grew up I used to love Salvador Dali and he, used, he was a master of putting um, puzzles and things in his artwork he would used to put people and shapes in his artwork and it would be to see if you could see two shapes at once so if you can see a head and you can also see a picture you can almost see the foreground and the background at the same time which is a sign of a great artist so what i'm doing is i'm trying to get darker by just adding some more black to the mix some dark black and some blue just at the bottom just because i want to frame the light and again just like always i want to darken the corners just to frame the composition and it just gives this really quick look that it's nice and light so now we're going to do our sunset in the background so we're going to use really pastel tones so we're going to use this naples yellow which is i've got pre-mixed which is just white lots and lots of yellow and a dot of black so white and yellow and a dot of black okay but a dot literally a dot and all we're going to do we're just going to create some heat around our sun just by creating a nice light yellow effect and we're going to get cooler as we get away from the sun and we'll just make a nice light sort of lavender tone for our sky so all i'm doing i'm just using that color just for the horizon i'm not worried if it's all scruffy and streaky as I say, like always, if we get here some purple, lots and lots and lots of white, so a little bit of purple, lots and lots and lots of white, and a dot of black, and you should get this lovely sort of lavender tone. Yeah, as I say, always don't worry at this stage if your work is really streaky and it just looks terrible. That is totally normal with acrylics. Um, you've just got to leather the paint on and just get it all nice and blocked in. And then what we can do is we can go over the top with more realistic blending so to make this dark this light blue all you need is some cerulean blue some cobalt blue lots and lots of white and a dot of black so a dot of cerulean blue a dot of cobalt blue lots and lots of white and a dot of black and you get this light pastel blue so if anyone would like to know what paints I use or what brushes I use or even things like the throwaway palettes here that I use and things like that, just in the description below I've just put a link and it has all the things that I try to use in the videos. So all I'm doing, look, I'm just trying to match the sky with the 
see below so I'm just trying to match the colors as I say don't worry if it's streaky don't worry if you've got burnt sienna shining through we're just trying to leather the colors on and we're just trying to match it before we blend it and we make it all nice and bit better looking but all we're just trying to do is just sort of roughly get the outline for everything so we can start putting in all the detail so if you dry your work, well, the great thing about acrylic paints is once you dry it, you can just go over the top and make everything look much neater. It's a very easy trick with acrylic paints. Unlike oil paints, which take ages and ages to dry, acrylic paints, if especially in a hot day or if you have a hair dryer handy, you can just literally color, um, color? You can just literally dry them and just rework your painting. So that's what I'm doing here. You will get some sometimes streaks. You will sometimes get, you know, like bits of the canvas showing up, especially if you're using lighter tones such as yellow. So all I'm doing here, I'm just mixing a bridge tone between yellow and that purple, just cause it's a big jump between yellow and cool purple. So all I'm doing is mixing some yellow and white and a dot of black with some purple and white and a dot of black. And I'm just mixing it with my blender brush. I've got some bright yellow going around the sun and I'm just trying to create the illusion of heat. But I'm just trying to blend that yellowy purple tone together just so there's not too much of a jump between the hot colour of the yellow and the cool lavender tone. And then now I've got that tone, because it's kind of like a bridge, I can just gently blend with my blender brush into the cooler purple see how that works so as i say just going over the top and now adding that lighter blue that we used earlier so all i'm doing i'm just going over the top of my previous painting and i'm just using a softer brush and i'm just trying to blend the tones and as they dry what's really really great about acrylics is you can just go over the top and you can just make all your transitions a little bit softer and try to match the colors just so they look a bit more realistic when you see nature the transitions are so seamless you can't even tell where um, a color starts and another one begins it's just absolutely perfect so what we want to do is we want to get as close to nature as we can obviously that's impossible but we can try so just using some white and let's say some homemade naples yellow which is just white some yellow and a dot of black just a dot and we're just gonna make our Sun just look a bit more brighter and just look really really cool so that looks nice and then we'll just blend it over the top so sometimes um, I could fast forward these bits in the tutorial and a lot of tutorials probably do but it wouldn't show you how to build it up sometimes with painting so look this is the bridge tone and all we're doing we're just adding the two colors together so yeah sometimes you've just got to go back and forth you might have to dry your work reapply the paint dry your work reapply the paint and sometimes that is just the case it is literally if you want seamless blending you've got to sometimes just give it a coat or two any canvas even a white one you are going to get streaks and especially if you're using these very light tone pastel colors so don't worry about that that's totally normal the secret is is to just keep going over the top like i'm doing and just try to get your your um sky more fluid and just more soft in transitions and that's what tricks the eye so look just adding more of the purple white to the naples yellow we're just going to get a little bit darker so more purple and white than the yellow now and we're just going to mix the two tones together so all i'm doing look i'm just mixing it and then i'm wiping the paint off my brush and then just mixing the two tones together can you see so i put lots and lots and lots of paint on and then i just wipe a little bit on my skanky clothes and I just merge the lighter tone into the darker tone with a blender brush, which is just a really soft bristle tone. And just add some of that light blue in the corner just to frame it, just to make it look like it's getting cooler. Because obviously the heat source is coming from the sun and the sky is getting cooler and darker as it moves away. 
So all I'm going to do, just like um, normal, I'm always going to use a light colour on the horizon. Now the reason I use a light colour on the horizon is because A, that's what nature does, <laughs> but, but basically it's just to make a nice transition in the sky and we can create some wispy clouds. Um, if you ever see a sunset, you have normally whatever colour is around the sun at the base of the horizon. And then what we're trying to do, we're just trying to use the same tones that we just used, so that so that purpley yellowy colour, that bridge tone, and we're just going to bridge it. But if you can see clearly here, look, you've got streaks in the paint. You are going to get that with acrylic paints, unless you use incredible a lot of paint. Because they're water-based, you will get streaks. So as I say, a lot of the tutorials, you, uh, even I watch and even I, I do, a lot of them um, skip steps because obviously they're blending off screen in the magic of editing. So I'm trying to show you that it is normal to have this. It is normal to dry it, reapply the paint. Dry it, reapply the paint, okay? And by just taking your time and knowing that and just knowing, look, it happens to everyone. Look, by going over it again, look how seamless it, just reworking it, it just looks softer, it just looks more professional, it just looks better. There's less streaks, there's less horrible brush marks in it, and the colours just naturally go blending into one another. So that's all we're trying to do, we're just trying to match the sky tone with the water tone. And we're just trying to blend it in, and where you've got streaks, just cover them up. That's why I always paint my canvas burnt sienna is because on a white canvas I might not notice some of these streaks until I finish and then that would really annoy me because I'd have to go back. So all I'm doing, I'm just using that mix between the two tones just to soften up the horizon. I'm just going to get some purple and white and a dot of black, just a little bit more purple to it so it's a little bit darker. And I'm just going to create a shadow tone for my clouds so we're going to build up some clouds but we still want them very very pastel i don't want them overbearing so i'm just using this very very light sort of lilac color and all i'm doing is just creating a shadow tone for my clouds so this is just the parts of the clouds that don't get as much light so they're just a bit darker in tone and all i'm going to do now is I'm going to get some of that yellow and orange that we pre-mixed earlier. So it was yellow, orange and a dot of black. And I'm just going to add some white to it. So I'm just going to soften it up a little bit. So it's this lovely, really sort of creamy tan colour. And all I'm going to do with the same soft brush is just blend it into that light pastel purple. And all that is, is we've got a highlight part of the cloud, which is picking up the sunlight, and a darker underside, which is more in the shadow. But we want to use really pastel tones because we want to push our sunset really far back. So if you think we're sitting in the cave, we're looking at the sun, we're right in the, in the dark, we want to be looking at a far away sun. So all I've got here is I've got some white and literally a little dot of yellow. So just lots and lots of white and a tiny dot of yellow just to make it a little bit off white. And all I'm doing, I'm just using a fine liner just to outline these clouds. And all that is, is just the sunlight beaming and creating an outline on our clouds. And again, it just frames the clouds, just makes our sunset look a bit more realistic. So just like the shadow, we're gonna add a little bit more yellow as we go around the clouds and just make our outline a little bit more yellow now. So if you think nearer the sun it's very white and the fur away from the sun it's just a bit more yellow in tone. And all again that does, it just matches the transitions, just matches the light effect and it just looks natural and it just looks really cool. So look, all I'm doing is just going around the shapes, just creating shapes just to emphasize the highlights and just give our clouds a nice 3D effect. How easy is this? Super easy. So that is cool. So if you dry your horizon and you just measure a straight line before you apply any tape, all I'm going to do is just soften up the horizon, just use a little bit of white into that bridge tone just to make some wispy clouds and just make it look a lot softer. So that, there we go. Just make it look a little bit lighter. And I'm going to whip my tape off and I'm just going to re-dry it before I put the tape back on. You don't want to put your tape on 
if your canvas is wet so please dry it with a hairdryer and all we're going to do now our sky and our sunset looks lovely we're going to create some waves so we're going to get some purple and a little bit of black and a little bit of brown so a tiny bit of black a bit too much black so let's put some more purple back in and a little bit of yellow just to suck a bit of the color out so purple black and brown and a little bit of yellow this adds more purple than anything let's put a little bit of orange just to heaten it up because it's going to be underneath the sun and we should have this nice realistic tone and this is going to be our wave so we're going to go right up to the tape with a flat brush so the great thing about a flat brush is because the end is flat if you think of a flat headed screwdriver it's very much flat and all we're going to do is we're going to leave gaps in that yellow underpainting that we've created and we're just going to create squiggles so think of lines that are just a bit wonky and these are going to be our shadows of our waves so look all i'm doing is leaving plenty of yellow underneath and i'm just trying to create the illusion of waves so i'm just leaving gaps in the underpainting now because we've created that underpainting what's so fantastic about that is that light because it matches the sky when we finish our waves in a split second it will trick your eyes and it will look 3d and real yay so look all i'm doing is going right up to the horizon so all i'm doing is going right up to our tape just so we get a nice framed horizon now under the sun it's just going to be a little bit warmer so all i'm going to do is add some yellow and orange and i'm just going to soften up those waves i'm just literally going over the top of the waves i just painted in just a softer brighter more warm tone and that's just to make it look like the um, sunlight is just sun sun shining on those caps of those waves and again it's just to match the light so it's just an easy trick we're just trying to match the light on the waves below so that looks really cool it's just softening them up as well just so push them back so it makes our sunset and our seascape look further away and all i'm going to do here i'm just going to put some bright white with a dot of yellow just underneath the sun just so it looks like the shimmer on the water so where you have that really harsh sunlight you get that sort of shimmer coming down below it now i'm going to take some black and purple and i'm just going to make a dark tone i'm going to add a little bit of orange now because we're coming towards the viewer we're coming towards the foreground as i always keep teaching you we use our darkest tones as we come up towards the viewer so all i'm doing using my thin edge of my flat brush i'm just adding some harsher shadows because these are the waves that are nearest to the viewer and by using softer pastel tones and things like the clouds and the far off waves what that does just look i'm just lighting them up just with a little bit more yellow so i'm just going over the top just in the same tone we used previously by using lighter tones look if i take it away it just pushes it back it just makes it look pushed back so all we're going to do just like we just did our lovely um seascape in the background with our sunset and our water we're going to do the exact same trick we're just going to rework our cave so we're going to do the actual cave wall itself so what we're going to do first is we're going to try to do a light effect so just like we did with the underpainting of the water and then we put the waves over the top we're going to do that with texture so we're going to create the lovely underpainting and then put all the rocks and texture over the top so all i'm doing is using yellow and orange and a dot of black in the, around the sun just on that far edge so that's where the light is going to be at its harshest and that's why it's so bright and as i'm coming in i've got a bit of a dirty brush i've just noticed but it's kind of nice <laughs> it kind of looks good so what i'm doing is just adding a little bit of orange because i've got a manky brownie brush i think it's blending the two tones together so what we want to do is we want to go from yellow and orange to a bit of orange and then just so we want to keep the light at the really really bright just around the sun so right on his forehead and then what we're going to do is we're going to add some burnt sienna to the mix so yellow and orange add some burnt sienna and orange to the mix just to darken it up and a little bit of blue and black so a tiny bit of blue and black and we should get this really bright orangey brown and because it's got a little bit of that blue and black that's why i've got the sort of 
musty, dirty brush sort of effect. And he just gives a bit more realism to it. And all we're going to do, we're just going to frame round his nose. And we're just going to use that same tone. And I'm just leaving a bit of that orange edge that we did previously, because I think that looks pretty. I think it looks like the sunlight creeping in. And I'm just going to blend it over the top. So I'm just going to blend it. And I'm just trying to frame the light. So if we add some burnt sienna, some black, and a little bit of brown, and some blue and black. So ori and, sorry, burnt sienna, blue and black, and a little bit of brown. You should get a darker tone. Now, because it's still got burnt sienna in it, and it's got blue and a little bit of black in it, it's not fully black. It's like a very dark, warm brown. And what we're going to do, just like the underpainting for the sky, we're just trying to darken up our corners so we can frame the composition. So obviously we're going to see, uh, sign it in the left hand corner, but by darkening all the corners, we're going to draw the viewer's eyes to look directly towards our sun. And to warm it up, so because you've got this very dark tone, you can just add a little bit of a warm tone such as burnt sienna. So all I'm doing, I'm just going back between the tones. It doesn't matter if your brush is dirty, because in fact it will blend nicely. And all I'm doing, look, I'm just adding a really bright tone, and I'm just blending it gently into the darker, mustier tone. And because we've got those lovely framed dark corners, it just looks really, really nice. And it just looks like the light peering round from the sun. So I'm just going to add a little bit of highlights just here on this corner because this edge will be getting some sunlight. And I'm just going to blend that dark corner. So there we go. That looks fantastic. So what we're going to do now is we're going to blend a dark tone for the texture of our cave. So we've used some blue, some black and some burnt sienna to get a very dark shadow tone. And we're going to add all the lumps and bumps on texture of our cave walls to make it look more 3D. So all I'm doing, I'm just creating shapes. I'm just trying to think where rocks would be and I'm just creating the illusion of texture. So sometimes I'm going up and down and just creating sort of the shapes of rocks. And other times I'm just going across the way just to add sort of bumps and crevices just to make it look like shadows and just to add more texture. So that's all I'm doing. Look, I'm just creating shapes and because we've got that fantastic blending underneath, when adding all this texture, it just tricks your eyes and just makes it look more 3D. So it's a really, really easy tutorial, like I keep saying to you. It's all in the underpainting, it's all in the tones. So look, all I'm doing is just creating the illusion of texture, the illusion that it's all 3D and there's all these crevices. So I wonder if there's some pirate's treasure in here. <laughs> so look, all I'm doing is just some are going across, some going down. And I'm just trying to create the illusion of texture. Now, because we're using a dark tone, because that's in the foreground, we're going to get a bit lighter as we move towards the sun. So by adding a bit burnt sienna to our black, blue and brown, we're just going to warm it up a little bit. So still got black, blue and brown, but we've added burnt sienna now just to make it a little less harsh. And because we're going towards the sunlight, we're still doing the same technique, but just the tone is not as dark because it's moving away from the viewer and towards that light source. So look, all we're doing, we're gonna, I'm going to add some rocks here, I think. Why not? Just give it a more 3D effect. We can have some rocks that maybe a pirate stumbled across like one-eyed willy from the goonies <laughs> so we're going to do some texture here and some rocks just to frame it just to make it look nice and then we're going to add some more heat to the mix because we're getting closer towards the sun so we're adding orange which is much more heat and that will create a more tan color let's add some of that yellow and orange together so let's just make it more yellowy orange so you should get a much more tan color and as we move towards that highlight look we're just using a less harsh tone and you can blend it into that highlight and again it's just so the texture looks less harsh and it tricks your eye so look, all we're doing is just making this texture just a little less harsh on the viewer's eyes. It matches the tone in the light 
and it just looks more realistic. So look, just create texture, just create shapes like boulders and rocks. So there we go. So that's all dry. Now please dry it because what you can do is once it's dry is you just take the highlight colour which was yellow, orange and a dot of black and just really smoothly glaze that area over your dark shadows and it will just trick the eyes and it will just look like the light beaming across that part of the cave. But what it does as well is because you've already added the texture just by glazing it with hardly any paint just a dry brush on a dry canvas because you've dried it you won't smudge it you won't you won't um, get horrible black marks everywhere but what it does it just makes those um, those added textures just look less harsh and we're going to do exactly the same with some orange and some yellow and some burnt sienna so orange burnt sienna and we're just going to make a little bit orangey tone and we're just going to put some highlights here so this is just a little bit darker but it's still a highlight tone it's just bits of the light that we're just going to match it up and again it's just to create the light effect like that beaming sun is coming into the dark cave and it's just making it all light up and just making it add some texture and again it's just to give it a 3d look so it's really really easy techniques so we're just gonna put some on the rocks because they're getting a bit of sunlight so it's a really really easy technique easy tutorial and all I'm gonna do is just get some bright white just like we did the really harsh shadows we're gonna use a bright highlight because it's nearer to the viewer and that's just all the froth of the water why it hits those rocks so when the water comes up against the rocks it just goes bang and then you get all that sort of sea froth just in and around the rocks and again it's just to give it another added detail just a little bit more 3d just to make your work look more realistic now if you are brave you could dry your work and add sunbeams now to do sunbeams we've done them in a few of the tutorials you get hardly any paint you have a dry canvas because as I say if you make a mistake you can just use a baby wipe to wipe them away and you get a dry brush and you have hardly any paint and you just create the illusion of straight lines so again you can use a flat brush because then you should get nice straight lines and all we're gonna do is just glaze it so look if you don't like it you can just wipe it out if your background is dry you can just use a baby wipe and all you do is just take some white and a dot of yellow and you just have hardly any paint Look, I'm just smudging it and it's almost like chalk because you've got barely any paint you can just smudge it and we're just making it very bright around the Sun that's a really really bright hardly any paint and I'm just going to create a little circle going around and sometimes when people take photography or your eyes being that it's a circle you get that sort of lens glare and it just again tricks the eye so look at that that looks fantastic so all I'm going to do is use some yellow and white to create a beam of shimmer and I'm just going to take some of that yellow, orange and a dot of black just to create some heat around the sun just so it matches and that looks fantastic. So I've signed her in the bottom corner so you've learnt now how to do sunbeams, you've learnt how to match the water with a lovely pastel colour, you've learned how to do texture on your cave, how to do a light effect, how to darken your corners, how to create waves and rocks and highlighted clouds on this easy acrylic painting tutorial. So thank you so much for watching guys, my name is Murray, um, we have over 40 odd tutorials, landscape tutorials here on my channel, so thank you, if you haven't already liked and subscribed, please do so, and all the other videos should be coming up on the right hand side, so take care everybody look after yourselves see you soon bye